Good morning. Thanks for joining us for our QuickBooks Connect Roundtable. Today we are covering sales tax. Um, Debbie Denny will walk you through all you need to know about sales tax in QuickBooks. Um, just a few housekeeping items before she gets the broadcast going. There are attachments to this presentation. So if you look um, on the GoToWebinar dashboard that you have in front of you, um, under the Handouts tab, you should click that tab and a drop-down will appear and you'll see a, um, a Word document that says Sales Tax website, um, a PDF that says set up, and use tax in QuickBooks updated. And I believe that's a Word document as well. Um, if you have any questions as we're going through this presentation, also in that dashboard, there's a drop down that says questions. And you can go ahead and type in your questions there. Um, throughout the presentation, Debbie will um, pause, look at the question box, and answer um, any questions that come through. And she will do that periodically throughout the presentation. So with that, I will turn it over to Debbie. Um, thank you for attending, and thank you, Debbie. Thanks, Corey. So we're going to start talking about sales tax and how to set it up in QuickBooks. And let me move this. And if you look at the attachments, um, the setup attachment is going to walk you through how to set up a sales tax item in QuickBooks. So we'll just go through that step by step. So the first thing you want to do is set up your sales tax items. So you can go to lists and or you can go to items and services. But what you want to do is get to the item list. And if you're in a state or community that might have multiple sales taxes, you're going to want to set those up individually. Um, I'm in Green Bay, Wisconsin, so I have a county tax and a state tax that I have to pay. Um, depending on where you're located, where you're selling to, you're going to have different sales tax items. You have to be very careful with the Wayfair document or the Wayfair verdict. Um, if you're selling to out-of-state vendors or out-of-state customers, you want to make sure that you are charging the correct sales tax. And in the website, the sales tax website, it gives you a link to um, the Sales Tax Institute. Let me just click on that quickly. And this will give you a chart that says um, when the different states adopted the different sales tax codes and or the different sales taxes in the Wayfair due to the Wayfair ruling. So some of them have, some states have thresholds, some do not. So sales tax is very tricky right now if you are working with out-of-state customers. Um, I've actually had some clients of mine that work with out-of-state customers that have decided they're not doing out-of-state work anymore because of the sales tax issue. It just gets so complex because every state, every county, there could be several different types of sales tax. Um, I've got a client in Chicago that has three different types of sales tax that they have to pay. So you want to make sure you're on top of the sales tax laws. So to set up a sales tax item, we are going to do a new item. And it is going to be a sales tax item. Give it a name. So I'm in Green Bay, so we've got a Brown County sales tax, which is 0.5% paid to the Wisconsin Department of Revenue. I'm just going to quick add that. And then we also have Wisconsin sales tax, which is 5%. So then what I'm going to do, I've got my Brown County and my Wisconsin. What I'm going to do next is to add a sales tax group. 
So I'm going to add another new item that is a sales tax group. And I'm going to call it Brown, Wisconsin. And then I'm going to pick my two sales tax items that is going to add to 5.5%. And if you have multiple items in the multiple sales tax items, um, if you're near Milwaukee, you're also going to have a, the um, additional tax for the stadium. So you could have three, four, doesn't matter. You can have multiple sales tax items and group them together. So that's how you, first of all, create your sales tax item. So you want to make sure you group them together so that way when you are running your sales tax report, um, it will differentiate which is state, which is county, which is, you know, which sales tax. Um, you also want to set up a default sales tax. So under edit on the top menu bar, you have your preferences. And in your preferences list, you have sales tax. I'm going to click on Company Settings, and this is where it asks you if you charge sales tax. Well, if you're not seeing any sales tax items in your setup, if you don't have that option, that means this is probably set to no. So you want to come in, change your company preferences to yes, I charge sales tax, and then you can add your most common sales tax item or grouping right here. And this is what's going to <coughs> Um, <coughs> excuse me, this is what's going to show up in your customer setup, which you can also change per customer. And then assigning sales tax codes, if the taxable item is tax, it's, and then taxable or non-taxable can go to non-tax sales. When do you owe sales tax? In the state of Wisconsin, you always owe it as of the invoice date. Um, unless you have special permission from the Wisconsin Department of Revenue, um, if you have special permission, you can then do it upon receipt of payment on a cash basis. But the majority, almost everybody I know, pays it as of the invoice date. Um, different sales tax payment schedules, monthly, quarterly, or annually. Um, so you want to set that depending on how the state has you set up. You want to click OK. And that sets your sales tax preferences. Now you want to tell QuickBooks who and what gets taxed. So first of all, we're going to look at your taxable items. So in the item list, again, where your sales tax codes are, this is also your item list. And here's where you tell QuickBooks this is a taxable item. If I double click on my item, it shows my tax code right here. And that tells me if I should or shouldn't be charging tax on that item. You can always change it on the invoice, but um, here's where you show QuickBooks that it's taxable. Then what you want to do is look at your customer list and tell QuickBooks what customers are tax are going to be charged tax. Um, if you maybe do some work for a church or a nonprofit organization, they might give you a tax exempt certificate, in which case you would mark that customer as non-taxable. So I'm just going to bring up a customer, go to my sales tax settings, and tell QuickBooks if it's taxable or non-taxable, the tax item for the specific customer. Again, we can change this per invoice. We would need to. And if they are tax exempt, you could put their exemption certificate number here. Just a good thing to have on hand. So that would be setting up your customer for sales tax. So when you are invoicing your customers, I'm just going to go back and find an invoice. Here's where I 
tell QuickBooks, okay, based on this invoice and this customer, these items are taxable. And this item is non-taxable. Um, again, each state is different regarding taxability of um, goods and services. So you're going to want to make sure, again, that you know what you're doing in each state so you know whether it's taxable or not. The sales tax has a lot of gray areas, um, and you always want to make sure you get the – try to get – everything in sales tax right because you don't want to get penalized. Um, so in this case, this customer is being charged Bayshore tax. We'll just look at Brown County tax. So you can see it's registering at 5.5%. Just going to change this one. And you can see here in my tax items, I can change this to non-taxable when you're going through and doing the sales tax. So I'm going to save that. And there we go. So QuickBooks does a nice job of tracking your sales tax based on your invoicing. Or if you are doing receipts, QuickBooks will also um, do your sales tax on the different receipts. I'm going to change that to Brown County. So I've created my invoice, I've created a sales receipt. Now I'm going to look at manage sales tax. It's the end of the month, it's time for me to get my sales tax together. So I am going to manage sales tax, or you could also go to vendors, sales tax. Here it gives me my preference box. If I need to change anything there. And it gives me two different reports, sales tax liability and sales tax revenue summary. The sales tax liability report, I'm going to just change that to this month. And here's where you can see our Brown County and Wisconsin for those invoices. So QuickBooks will keep the Brown County separate from the Wisconsin. So if you're doing sales in multiple counties, you're going to have multiple counties listed under the Department of Revenue. So that way when you're calculating, you're doing a sales tax report, you can put in the proper amount of sales for that county. If you're wondering what makes up these amounts, you can always double click on the amount and it'll show you the different items, invoices, and sales receipts that are being taxed and not taxed. So if something looks funny to you, that's how you can get back and change it. Look at our non-taxable sales. There's an invoice for something that's not taxed, which is a service, consulting and training. So you can get the details of all your sales of all your sales that are being charged and not charged tax. So at the end of the day, QuickBooks is telling me I owe $690.91. Well, I figure that's probably correct. So I am going to go to pay my sales tax. So right now, QuickBooks is calculating the tax through 1130. I'm just going to change the state to 1231. So now it brings me in my Wisconsin taxes, my Brown County, and my Wisconsin. Well, in Wisconsin, we get a discount for paying on time. So it's either $10 or a percentage. So I'm going to adjust this as of 12:31. If I'm tracking classes in QuickBooks, that's where I'm going to change my class. And my adjustment account is going to be other income. And I'm going to reduce the sales tax, in this case, by $10. Click OK. And now it's going to recalculate. And now it has three items to click, which includes my discount, 
and I'm going to be paying $680.91. If you are paying online, you can put EFT or leave the check number blank. If you want to print a check, you click the To Be Printed box, and then you can actually print a check. So let's say I'm going to print a check. I say OK. And then I can go into File, Print Form, Checks. And here's my check to the Department of Revenue. So if I just want to print that one, I can click OK and print that check. Related tasks, just little shortcuts to view the sales tax items. Gives you a list and percentages. Open the sales tax codes. You can have different tax codes. And adjust the sales tax. So that's a little bit about the sales, setting up sales tax and actually paying it in QuickBooks. If you haven't used the pay sales tax before, you might have some kind of crazy numbers in here that don't match. Um, if that's the case and you know your sales tax liability report is correct, then what I would just do is when you go to pay it, is just put in the, at the correct amount. Because if, if it's saying you owe $1,800, but you know you only owe, in this case, say $463 and or $2845, you can change the amount. So I'm going to change this one to, well, let's see, what is, which one's which. Bayshore is the one for $2845.09. San Thomas is $463.15. So you can just change the amounts if these amounts are not correct. Um, and then I can click OK and fix that. The sales tax revenue report if I look at it for December it's going to show me my taxable sales and non-taxable sales. So then if you need to see what's also what's in your sales tax register, you can go into the chart of accounts and find your sales tax payable account it's right here. And here we can see, here's that $10 adjustment that I made. It shows up as a general journal entry. And then all the other tax payments, memos, credit memos, invoices, here's all the detail in a register form. Or you can always right click on that and do a quick report. And again, it'll give you all the information of all the in yeah, invoices, receipts, sales tax payments. So that's sales tax, setting it up and paying it through QuickBooks. Um, one thing I want to make note of is use tax. And we have our use tax. And many people aren't aware of use tax. And what use tax is, is it's if you purchase something, um, maybe for resale, but you end up using it in your business for your business, um, then that should be something that you pay use tax on. So if I'm a grocery store and I buy paper toweling to put on the shelf, but then I use four rolls of paper toweling or something like that, the ones I use, take off the shelf and actually use in the business should be charged use tax because normally when you purchase that product, you're not paying tax on it. 
So when you do have to pay use tax, or say for instance, you are purchasing something from Amazon and they don't charge you sales tax, and even on a personal level, when you do your Wisconsin tax form, on a personal level, there is a question when you do your 1040, have you purchased anything that you weren't charged sales tax on? And in that case, you should be paying use tax. Um, so like a lot of times, Amazon will not charge sales tax. That is where you want to pay use tax. So here's how you would set up use tax in QuickBooks. And I'm just going to show you. This is all in the attachment. So we're going to set up a new account called use tax. So it's going to be an other current liability. And I'm going to call it use tax payable. Save that. So with my use tax, this is how I'm going to track it in QuickBooks. So I'm going to enter a bill from one of my vendors and say this vendor did not charge me tax. So here's all the items that I've ordered from this vendor. And let's say I should have been charged tax on these, but he, because I'm a reseller, I didn't get charged tax, but I know I'm going to use these for my internal workings. So I am going to, oops, it's my items tab. In my expenses tab, I am going to, my items, take a look at this real quickly. I'm going to save this quickly. So when I look, I'm going to do Control Y on my keyboard, and it's going to show me which accounts that these items are affecting. So it's my inventory. So what I could do is I could add in this in this case that I'm using. 5.5% to each one of these items. So the actual cost of this computer case is 445, and then I'm going to hit the asterisk for multiplication, 0 0.055. Oh, let's go back to Bert. Okay, so it's 445. So that's the amount of my sales tax. Hit plus 445, and now that's the cost of that item. You say, no, I don't want to update the new cost. So we've got 595. Plus 595. So you're going to do that for each of your items that you are getting charged or you're assessing use tax for. Then under your expenses tab, I'm going to say use tax payable. And this is the amount that I've increased my invoice by. But I'm going to put it in as a minus. and put in a memo if you'd like. So if I calculate the invoice, it doesn't change the amount due because I've added on this tab and subtracted on this tab. So it should be the actual amount due. I'm going to save. And then when I go back to my managed sales tax. You can also run a report actually. Let's do that. Look at my chart of accounts. 
and go to my use tax payable. And I'm just going to right click and do a quick report. And this is my list of use tax items. So I've got $57.21 to pay use tax on. So when you're going to pay sales tax, change my date. I've already paid my Wisconsin sales tax, but I'm going to adjust and I'm going to increase my sales tax by 57.21 for the use tax. Sales tax vendor, Wisconsin Department of Revenue, and the adjustment account is sales tax payable, or I'm sorry, use tax payable. So then it will let me make my use tax, which you're going to probably do along with your um, sales tax return. So you're going to have, in the case, hang on one second, I'm just going to delete that last sales tax payment I made. You can kind of see how this is going to work. All right, so let's go back and pay my Wisconsin sales tax. And again, here's my Wisconsin sales tax, room 1231. And oh, it didn't delete. Hang on a second. Oh, I found the wrong one. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Because I believe it went to. There we go. Receipt, receipt, sales tax payment. Nope, it's not that one. Here we go, WDR. I'm going to delete that. Pay sales tax. Change my date. And here we've got our Wisconsin Department of Revenue. Brown County use tax. So I already adjusted for the use tax. And if I have addition, um, I can adjust it increasing it. And I can also adjust it reducing it all in the same transaction. So in this case now, I have four different items to check off. Or actually three, because it what QuickBooks does is it nets the $10 discount that I got plus the $57.21 for the use tax. And then I have my $47.21. So once you will always want to keep in mind use tax. Um, it's one area I find a lot of people tend to not think about. Um, and then again, you've got your different sales taxes in your different counties, your different states, um, and it can get quite crazy. So again, when you're doing your invoicing, make sure you are charging the proper amount of tax for your customer. And again, depending on your state, what items are taxable and non-taxable. Um, the state of Wisconsin has publication 201, which will give you all the information for the different counties. And pretty much every state will have some kind of sales tax publication that does charge sales tax. Some county or some states don't even charge sales tax. I 
don't want the deer season. <laughs> Application 201. And that brings me to Department of Revenue. And here's my sales tax information for Wisconsin. There's a nice chart telling you what and who gets charged tax and the percentage per county. Let's find the counties. There's also a calculator um, that you can get to through this website. And it will tell you based on the zip code you put in what tax they should be taxed at. I found the chart. Where is it? Here we go. Here's counties with county tax. So it tells you the effective date. And then also counties without county tax. And out of Gamey County. Um, starting January 1st, we'll have the 0.5% county tax. So if you're in Outagamie County and you sell taxable products, make sure as of January 1st, you get your sales, your county tax added in. You can see there aren't many counties in Wisconsin that do not charge the extra percentage. Um, there's also a county or stadium tax. If you are selling to customers in these five counties for the baseball stadium. I believe Brown County was the first ever state when we had the stadium tax in Green Bay. When that expiration date came about, we actually dropped the additional 0.5% for probably a year, year and a half before we reenacted the 0.5% use or sales tax for different reasons. So, but yeah, there's a lot of very useful information in this publication 201. Um, you could also Google and the Wisconsin Dep Department of Revenue does have um, a lot of different publications out there for different industries. Um, so depending on your industry, there might be a separate publication um, as to what is and what is not taxable. Um, let's see. One second. So I'll just... So if I look up Wisconsin sales tax on landscaping services, there's publication 210, and there's also a page that talks about sales tax and the implications on a landscaping and lawn maintenance services and snow removal services. So there's a lot of great information on the website as to what is and is, is not taxable. Um, if you are doing out-of-state sales, make sure you know if there is state tax, county tax. Um, there could be multiple different taxes. Um, my client in Chicago is a restaurant, so they have to pay a restaurant tax to the city of Chicago. They have to pay a metropolitan tax because they are on the pier, and then they have their regular state sales tax, which is also combined with the county tax and then the state tax. So it can be pretty complicated depending where you are and what industry you're in. So you always want to make sure you stay up on those things. Other than that, um, I did get a comment from one of my coworkers that when you are multiplying, in the, the case of use tax, hit the asterisk 1.055, and it'll give you the actual amount with the including the sales tax. 
Thank you, Jennifer, for the helpful hint. I appreciate that. So that's just another way to calculate what your use tax would be. When you're on an invoice, you want to make sure that you're letting QuickBooks calculate that for you. There we go. So on the invoice, the QuickBooks calculate it, but when you are, if you're assessing use tax, that's where you can do the point one zero five five. So if, I, if this was a taxable service, I can multiply it by 1.055, if my fingers work. There we go. So I know my use tax now is $30.97. And again, if I have different rates, it could be, you know, 1.10%, just depending on your where you're located. Any questions? I'm not seeing any questions. Um, no questions? I know sales tax is so exciting, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, um, that is pretty much it on sales tax. Um, if you need to run different reports, again, you can customize all kinds of reports. If I want to look at sales reports, by customer summary detail, I can add in my columns, you can add different columns for tax, tax lines, this is my tax line, if I wanted to add that into a report. My shipping zip code, that might be a good report to run on your customers based on where they're located, so you know what charge what to charge sales tax on. If you think you might be have your customers set up incorrectly, one really nice way to double check is to go into lists, add, edit, multiple list entries. And I'm going to look at my customer list. And from this customer list, I am going to customize the column and figure out which columns that I want. I'm going to remove some of these because I really don't need them. And I'm mainly going to look at my tax codes. So I'm going to go down the list, choose my tax codes, and my tax item, and let's just say maybe I want the zip code. And that would be under one of these. I'll just put the whole address in. Click OK. And now it gives me the com company or the customer name, whether it's tax, whether they're taxable or not, the tax item, the bill two, and again, my bill two three gives me the city and zip code they're in. So if you might be questioning if you're charging the correct amount, you can run this report and you can change Let's say I'm going to sort them actually by bill to, which will sort them by city and state and zip. And then I can look down to see if I'm giving everybody the correct sales tax setting. Well, Bayshore, California probably should not get charged Brown County, Wisconsin tax. And right in this list, I can go ahead and change it. So 
it's a really quick way to look at all your customers, look at if they're being taxed correctly. Um, I've done a conversion in the past where um, we converted from an old accounting system to QuickBooks, and in their old accounting system, their customer management system, their tax was not set up properly for their customers. So this was a really quick and easy way to figure out who was being taxed incorrectly and a quick way to make the changes. Once you make those changes in your list, you just click on Save Changes, and it says one customer record, record has been saved. That's because they only changed one. If you need to change a lot of them or all of them, say they should all be Brown County, I can click on Brown County, right click, and I can copy down. And it will copy Brown County to all of my customers. So that's one way to do it very quickly. It's just by right clicking and copying down. And again, this list is also a good one to use for vendors, or I'm sorry, for your items. So if I want to look at my inventory parts, maybe just to make sure I have them uh, marked taxable or non-taxable correctly, I'm going to customize my columns, and I am going to get rid of a few of these. Let's see here. With the sales tax code. And now here's my sales tax code, whether these items are taxable or non-taxable. So a good way just to double check and make sure that um, the items are set up properly. So again, on the list, the add, edit, multiple list entries, you have your customers, vendors, service items, inventory parts, non-inventory parts, or if you are on a higher version of QuickBooks, you also have inventory assemblies. So different items are things that you can change all in one screen versus going into each and every item or each and every customer. Any questions that you can think of, you might have, please put, um, put them in the question box. Um, and I'm seeing, let's see, best report for looking at out-of-state sales tax. Um, your out-of-state sales tax, again, your if you've got your um, sales tax code set up properly, you can look at your sales tax liability, and you should have a liability for out-of-state. You can set up an out-of-state code in your item list. Here's an example of one called out-of-state sales tax, and then you can set up your sales tax agency, which is going to be, if it's 0%, it's going to be none. Or you might have uh, sales, or maybe you wanted to track which, which out-of-state customers. So you might have a sales tax name for each state, depending what state they're in. So if I do a lot of sales, say in Minnesota, I could have a sales tax item called Minnesota, click OK, and then when I'm making a sale to a customer in Minnesota, when I set that customer up, I would assign them a Minnesota sales tax. So in my customer center, let's say Eric is Minnesota. We're going to say it's non-taxable because he's out of state. My tax item is going to be Minnesota. So when I do my invoice, you're going to see Minnesota comes up. And it's not going to charge tax because they said the tax rate was zero. But it will, on my sales tax report, give me a separate listing for Minnesota. 
So if I look at this report now for this month, I now have a total for Minnesota. So I can keep track of my sales for out of state. Or again, you could have just out of state. And then what you could do with those out of state sales is double click on the amount. And here it's got your list of invoices. I can then see here. Let me actually go to one that has more information and I'll show you what we could do. Here we go. I'm going to customize the report and I am going to add in the name of the state. So from here, I can total it by customer. I can total this report by um, customer type if I'm typing my customers, which I am. I've got referrals or no types. There's different things that you can um, total it by. You can also sort it differently. If you want to sort it by um, the state name, if you've got multiple states, you could do that. So that would be one way to um, get your sales from out of state. Again, if you're doing them in multiple states and you really don't need to keep track of each particular state, um, you just want to use the sales tax code then of out of, or let's see, out of state, I believe it said. Let me. Oh, hang on a second. That was in just going to one. So your customer tax code would be uh, I'm sorry, you would set one of these up as your one of your tax codes up as out of state. So I just changed the other one. So I'm gonna have a sales tax item called out of state. And click OK. So now when I look at my report, I now have or should have out of state if I would have saved it. <laughs> so let's just change a different one. So here's my out of state. They were taxable. I'm just going to say that's taxable. 12 3. And why is it not refreshing? Should bring my out of state sales tax code in. Oh, because it's not letting me. Let's do it this way then. Let's do a new one. And we will Okay, so I'm going to say this is out of state. And now when I look at my sales tax liability, I should have my out of state. And again, you can, um, if you want to look for each state, you can set up a sales tax vendor for multiple states, or you could just do out of state and customize a report based on the name of the state. And once you have this report customized, you can actually memorize it. And I'm just going to say out of state sales. 
and I'm going to save them in my customer listing. Customers. So now whenever I want to run the report, I can just go to reports, memorize, customers, and here's my out-of-state sales. And again, you've got your um, different sales tax codes. You've got your let's see, different customer tax codes. So, you know, you got to be careful. Like I said, sales tax is very tricky. If you're in the state of Wisconsin, um, there is, if you go into the website, or publication 201. I believe it's the very end of this publication. There is, oh, actually, no, I went too far here. Actually, if you just go to the Wisconsin Department of Revenue, And I'm going to go to businesses, and I am going to look at sales tax, sales and use tax. They've got common questions, common forms, and they have a contact us. Let's see. Um, let's see. There, I know there's a email address that you can actually email them because I've done it several times. Let's go back to businesses. Um, and let's just search. And let's see here. I'm going to go to contact us. Businesses. By topic. And here's state tax. And here's the can, where you can email questions. And again, that was just under contact us. Businesses by topic and then scroll down to sales use and withholding tax and it will give you either a phone number if you want to call them or email them i like emailing them because then i can be specific as to my customer's industry and then when they email me back i have documentation that this is what they said um, so if you're not sure if something's taxable or non-taxable or how you should be treating it this is a good way to find out is by emailing the state And they normally will get back to you within, I'd say, a week to 10 days. Um, like I said, sales tax can be complex, and you want to make sure you can get it right. And if you do have questions, don't be afraid to ask, because if you get it wrong and you did, do get audited for sales tax, you could owe a lot in penalties and interest. If you are should be paying sales tax and are not, if you should be charging sales tax and or not, or you should be assessing use tax and or not. So you want to be careful. We don't want to get in trouble with the state. We don't like penalties and fines. So um, make sure you have your ducks in a row. So that's sales tax. Anyone else have any questions? Because we're going to be done in, within an hour. And if you do have questions, feel free to email them in the question box right now. Or if you think of something later, 
I will give you my information right here. If you need to contact me, here is my email. and my direct line. So I will leave that up on the screen for a few moments if you do think of something after the fact. Um, if I can help you, I will most definitely try to do so. Otherwise, I can get you um, in the right direction to somebody that can help you for sure. Um, with all the new rules and regulations and the change up with the Wayfair case, um, there's a lot of questions going on within each state, and it it is very confusing. So if you're doing out-of-state sales, there is actually a program called Avalara, and they do interface, it does interface with QuickBooks, and that is a sales tax um, software. And a lot of people are looking into that software, and from what I heard, it's good. I've never used it personally, but it is out there. And let me give you the name of that, just in case. There we go, Avalara. And with that note, since I'm not seeing any other questions, um, I'm going to say thank you so much for attending. and. Um, if you do think of something after the fact, feel free to give me a call or send me an email. And um, I appreciate you coming today. I hope you learned a few things anyway. And um, stay on the lookout for any other new webinars that might be coming out. Um, we try to do the, um, round, the QuickBooks Roundtables once a quarter. We also do have a year-end webinar coming up that talks we're going to be talking about um, what you need to do at your end for like payroll and items like that. So that will be on our website. And I hope to see you there. And I appreciate your time. Have a great day.